Hello, good day. In the real world, borrowing rates are higher than lending rates. In this video, we are going to explore the impact of differential borrowing and lending rates on the capital allocation line. I have modified example from textbook by considering the real world scenario as we are living in low interest rate environment currently due to quantitative easing. For example, in Malaysia, the deposit rate is approximately 2% and the borrowing rate is approximately 5%. Most textbooks are written at a time when interest rate were high, so do not be surprised if you see that the figures are different from your textbook. Just treat it as more examples for learning. Ultimately, the concepts remain the same. I hope you enjoy the learning and analyzing process. Let's get started. In the real world, borrowing rate is higher than lending rate. Let's relax the assumption of capital allocation line by considering differential in borrowing and lending rate. I will use an example to elaborate. In this example, the lending rate is 2% and the borrowing rate is 5%. A risky portfolio P has an expected return of 15% and standard deviation of 22%. We are going to form a complete portfolio by combining risk-free asset with risky portfolio P. For a start, we assume the weight of investment in risky portfolio P is 100%. Therefore, the weight is shown as 1. I can use the formula of the capital allocation line to calculate the expected return and standard deviation of the complete portfolio. Let's take a look into the working. Let me show you the working on how I calculate the answer for complete portfolio. As you can see here, I have calculated expected return standard deviation and sharp ratio. Basically, I make use of the formula listed here. First, I calculate the standard deviation of complete portfolio. The standard deviation of complete portfolio is obtained by multiplying the weight in risky portfolio 1 with the standard deviation of risky portfolio 22%. And the answer is 22%. After I have obtained the standard deviation, I calculate the expected return of complete portfolio. The working is lending rate of 2% plus standard deviation of complete portfolio of 22% divided by standard deviation of portfolio P. Then I multiply with expected return of risky portfolio 15% minus the lending rate of 2%. So I obtain the answer as 15%. The sharp ratio is obtained by using the expected return of the complete portfolio, 15% minus the lending rate of 2% and subsequently divide by the standard deviation of the complete portfolio of 22%. And you get the answer of 0.59. You can repeat the working for a different borrowing rate of 5%. In this graph, I make use of the calculation to draw the capital allocation line based on different lending and borrowing rates. The intercepts at y-axis of 2% and 5% mean we invest 100% in risk-free asset and 0% in risky portfolio P. The blue line, which is the capital allocation line based on lending rate of 2%, is steeper and has a higher sharp ratio of 0.59. On the other hand, the red line, which is the capital allocation line based on borrowing rate of 5%, is flatter and has a lower sharp ratio of 0.45. I have drawn a new graph from the original. This graph shows the effect of combining the different lending and borrowing line. Here the CAL is in grey colour. It is no longer a straight line. 
it is in tank shape. The slope of the line changes at point P. Let's have a quick quiz to test your understanding. The CAL will therefore be king at point P. What is your answer? To the left of P, the investor is landing at 2% and the slope of the CAL is 0.59, which is higher. To the right of P, where weight is more than 1, the investor is borrowing at 5% to finance extra investment in the risky asset and the slope is 0.45. Now, let's combine the capital allocation line with efficient frontier and the driven level of investor utility. In this graph, our capital allocation line with different borrowing and lending rate is RL, L, K, B, C. There are three types of investors. Very risk adverse investor, investor with an average degree of risk aversion, less risk adverse investor. As you can see, there are three utility curves in the graph. What do you think the mean variance efficient frontier be? The points on the dashed lines are non-attainable. Therefore, the answer is RL, L, B, C. Let's conclude our finding. Usually, investors face borrowing restriction. Defensive investor or risk adverse investor would select risky portfolio at point L, which is the tangency point between the Markowitz efficient frontier and the line originated at RL. On the other hand, aggressive investor or risk taking investor would select risky portfolio at point B. This is the tangency point between the Markowitz efficient frontier and the line originated at RB. The market portfolio is somewhere between L and B. Thank you. I hope you can understand this session. See you and goodbye.